30 minutes. Uh... Don't worry, Jack, we'll give you a break. You don't have to sit there for 30 minutes. You'll just be immortalized on YouTube forever when this episode goes up on the air. And by the air, I mean on YouTube. So welcome everybody who's been watching the stream. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in tonight to our lovely episode. We're actually gonna have a, a lovely little talk back between myself um, and uh, some of the other writers on this episode. So uh, sit back, relax. Uh, if you wanna hear some behind the scenes info about what it's like to, to write and be involved in Scowl. And if you have questions, for the panel, please feel free to post them in the comments wherever you are and we will service them and uh, answer your questions. So without further ado, our panel, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I was like, do I stall and introduce them one by one or are they all gonna come well, in? <laughs> luckily, we all just showed up by Lovely magic you to stop by after, yeah. you know 40 minutes ago <laughs> <laughs> so, um before we dive into questions um if everyone if we could go around um and say your names your pronouns your uh current role of involvement with scowl um ashley if you want to start Sure. Hi, I am Ashley Lauren Rogers. I use she, her, and they, them pronouns. Uh, I am the creator slash head writer uh, slash current Scowl heavyweight champion because whenever you get any modicum of power, you make yourself the champion. <laughs> it's a good policy. Yeah. I support this. Uh, Rachel, do you want to go next? Yeah. Uh, I'm Rachel Weekly. I use they, them pronouns. Um, I'm a, uh, a performer, writer. I edit sometimes. I do lots of things with Scal. Uh, not the heavyweight champion yet. We'll see. Yeah. Mm. I like that tea. Mm. Good job. Good mm. job. Robin, do you want to go next? I am Robin Bennis. Uh, use she, her pronouns. And I do uh, a little bit of writing and just occasionally fill in for voices when <laughs> someone is in a coma or whatever. I don't really know the details. <laughs> Only when comas come, come into That's play. It happens. A voice coma. It's really a <laughs> yeah. unique situation. Yes, we it have is. one for, for voice comas. We have one for voice paralysis. They're each individual mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. segments of our of our performer contracts. Um, it's going in a whole place. <laughs> fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, and of course, uh, I am Lauren Elizabeth. I use she, her pronouns. I am a line producer and performer, um, just sort of all around it useful person with scowl that's sort of where i slide in um speaking of sliding in uh <laughs> robin because this is your first time with uh us on the talk back i wanted to ask you a couple of um direct questions um mostly because the folks haven't gotten to see as much of you yet and they've seen way too much of us so <laughs> Most people prefer to see less of me. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> like I, I, I in college, I was a stripper and I was the only stripper that people would tell to put more clothes on. It's in the in the business. It's called reverse strip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what they tried to tell me. The industry term. They were very nice about it for drunk guys. Oh, that's good. I never give them that credit. But um, did they give them money? Uh, once I had all my clothes on, it was just, it was, it was rocking in. It was just, so, Lauren, you had questions for Robin. <laughs> I have questions for Robin, but honestly, this works too. Um, We're learning lots. I have a habit of breaking things in a way that people appreciate for some reason. I do appreciate it. Um, so, Everybody Robin, feels. why don't you tell us? a bit about um, how you first got involved with Scowl and sort of what your your journey has. That's something I'm a little hazy about myself. I remember waking <laughs> up in a hotel room in Cleveland and Ashley was there and Rachel was there. And <laughs> All of this was consensual. Yeah. Were we well, never in Cleveland? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I believe it was Cleveland. It might have been Cincinnati. It was one of the um, same places. 
and I was wearing a referee shirt, and I just kind of went with it. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> it was it was Cincinnati. Um, it was it Cincinnati? Yeah, it was yeah. Cincinnati. Um, yeah, we were we. So Rachel and I got to Cincinnati, and we found out that uh, the accommodations that we were told, hey, you know, you're you're all set. Uh, we get there, and they're like, we don't have a room for you. It's like, Duh, Should we plug I, this particular convention, or is it better not to at this point? I think for right now, just because we're sharing a lot it of was, things. It was a convention. It. It's not like, like it yeah. wasn't just, we just yeah. didn't happen to end up in the same hotel room. Specifically, it was for uh, the one that we did for uh, Cry for the Moon. The, one, the first one where we introduced Jack and Carmilla. Mm. Uh, and <laughs> so we're like, hey, Robin. We haven't really met that much, but like, could we stay in your room? <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out to be the best thing ever. Yep, it was, it was pretty like a amazing. Whole weekend of sleepover. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so but, lovely. But we also dragged Robin into being our special guest referee because the good thing was for a uh, for one of these types of matches for a uh, last person standing match, all the referee has to do is count. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and make sure someone's not on their feet. <laughs> and these are two things that I knew Robin could do. Yeah, yeah. I can I can count way higher than that, in fact. Sometimes I have counted as high as like 10, 15. Um, oh, I like got up to 20. Well Getting real wild there. 15. All right. Mm-hmm. Show off. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> How many fingers do you even have if you can count that high? I mean, honestly. I have the normal eleven. Come on, don't don't get nasty okay, here. Uh, all right, cool. Just wanted to establish. Um, I really enjoy the continued theme of not. I think one of the people that's ever been on these talkbacks has known concretely when they joined Scowl and it's because they auditioned. <laughs> I believe it was our good friend Tyler. Yep. <laughs> well, but yeah, but even like that wasn't technically the start. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Like he auditioned, and then we were just like, "Now you're part of the family. It's fine." <laughs> of the various action figure like pushing together to talk and become in part of the same favorite toy drawer. Um, Mm-hmm. I was trying to go in good places with that, and none of it worked. Um, I think he had the clearest path. Anyway, Robin, I understand that you also do some writing, specifically on novels and stuff like that. I'm curious as to, um, A, a little bit more about that in general, because shameless plugs are great. <laughs> um, but also, I was curious as to how that writing process has involved your writing for scowl or you know the differences that you that you see in the in yourself in those two sort of creative processes yeah so i am uh the author of the signal airship series uh the guns above and by fire above which were edited by a certain uh multi hugo nominated editor uh named diana foe who has a certain relationship with ashley i'm not clear on that (laughs) distant Distant friends of some sort. I don't, I'm not sure. Some people say we're sisters. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like the clan. God damn it! I walked into a thing. Okay, yeah, this no, I, weird. I saw it. Don't worry. I got you. <laughs> like the classic. Also... Like, oh, those two ladies are living together. They must be. Good. Yeah, yeah. Just gals yeah. yeah. Just gals being pals. <laughs> Well, here we are, everybody. No, it's okay, once you write the disclaimer, it's not creepy at all. Yeah. None of you can hear her laughing in the other room, by the way. Anyway, continue. <laughs> Fine. Uh, all the worst possible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, I, Scowl is an interesting... Uh, it is a fun way to have a more freeform and loose um, type of writing. Um, since scowl characters are a little more colorful uh, than my uh, my particular characters, um, and it's just you know it's something you can have a lot of fun in, and the more fun you the more fun you have with it, the better it seems to come out. So it's hmm. kind of a blessing. Yay! Yep. Hashtag yeah. scowled. <laughs> we do have a question um, in the chat. I see a question, a question from just a random chat member. And some no ran- did that person L- donate? Way. Usually, you have to donate to get your question <laughs> asked. In these I think I think we can say they contributed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Rachel, 
McClay, McClay. <laughs> would like to know <laughs> what uh, Robin's cat's name are. So um, my cat's name is Dizzy um, because when I first got him, he used to walk in circles around me and then just fall over. Uh, and apparently this is a pretty common cat behavior. I did I mean, not realize that. I thought he had a medical condition. Um, you were like, help. Yeah. <laughs> and if, if you are asking about the other cat in that video, I have no idea. Someone broke into my apartment. I cannot, I, I have no, relationship to whatever that was there's that is a theme in scowl i was gonna it. say Actually, we're really <laughs> clarifying relationships today <laughs> really get so, to the bottom of that the carmilla um, broke into jack's apartment mm -hmm. the mimes, the mimes. Broke into <laughs> that's canon now apparently <laughs> some cat lawyer some yeah, yeah. so <laughs> cat lawyers have, like a b and b like roulette wheel when one day i'm just like who will have broken into whose apartment this month like, no oh, they all have to go to like group uh not group therapy but like to, it's like a group help for breaking yeah, into yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's just a little support group yeah mm -hmm. like an anger management breaking well, into I mean, home management the pandemic, pandemic on the cat lawyer can't go into her office so obviously she mm -hmm. has to operate out of somewhere he has yeah. to break into people's apartments mm -hmm. Speaking of the lawyer cat, sorry. Yeah, uh, no, this is a good I, transmission. I like this. Hisquire. I can't mm -hmm. remember their first name. I apologize. Mittens, Mittens Hisquire, I believe, is the Mittens. canonical name of that cat Mittens lawyer. Hisquire. Speaking of Mittens Hisquire, um, <laughs> Ashley just told me I had to ask about the lawyer cat. <laughs> tell me what to ask about it. So. The veil is really dropping on this yeah, cat. Yeah, wow, okay. okay. Yeah. A peek Who behind the curtains. Yeah. So, fine. So, here's the my curtains question. that have been clawed up, of course. Which cats. of you would want to be re represented by Mittens Esquire, and what would the case be? <laughs> okay. I mean, mm. if you're asking which of us, the answer is obviously me. I mean, I mean, it's like both of us. <laughs> Like, yeah. are we fighting for yeah. this? Is this maybe, a match you know, now? maybe this is like we're 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 joint. We're being, you know, like we're we're being, uh, we're we're, we're sisters. No, we're being. <laughs> um, oh no! <laughs> yeah, I I I will say the uh, the crime is absolutely cat burglary. <laughs> Did they steal the cat, or is the cat stealing things? It's well, I mean, we're the ones that are in trouble, so I imagine. <laughs> We, we just stole, stole a bunch of cats. We've yeah. been accused oh. of stealing then, a bunch I mean, of cats. They're just Mittens accusations. is the public defender who gets assigned to you and, and shows up and you're like, ah, mm. crap. Oh, no. mm. I think, I think we're accidentally writing an entire scowl mm -hmm. episode. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then you have no, to go wow. out into we're the giving, field. We're giving you the A material. Bro. And you're each on one side of the field. Mittens, <gasps> Mittens is in the middle oh. and you have to be, Mittens, come to me. Mittens, come to me. You never see cats do that in movies because it probably wouldn't be as interesting. <laughs> I've but seen they it just when it was like retroactively a huge <sighs> PETA violation. Like this is the only time I've seen it. Oh, yeah. PETA violation. Oh, speaking PETA. Of, <laughs> but speaking of um, cat lawyer, I think. Why do we have to? <laughs> All right, never mind then. No. <laughs> I will. I will say we initially, we initially, like Robin wrote the draft because Robin wrote the entire. Uh, this episode wrote the entire uh, saga of John Jacob, formerly the Jinglehammer Schmidt, and <laughs> we didn't have the cat lawyer in there. And then the cat lawyer thing happened, and it was just like we're we need this to happen. We need a cat lawyer. Robin, can you make this happen? And Robin was like, I could do something. <laughs> I think that was my favorite text to get so for the <laughs> hey we we tend to write these sketches i think about a month before the episodes air so that we have to or hopefully longer than that but at least a month beforehand so that we have the chance to revise film edit and not die and um <clears throat> and so the, the sketch got written ages ago and i think it was my favorite text having to do with the, the cat lawyer thing partially because it was just like cat lawyer we gotta do it but then also just this onslaught of cat puns 
Cat while you're playing. This is a writer's room thing, you know? Like, if you've ever been in a writer's room, you will spend the entire day on just useless crap that will never make it in the script. You know, what is the best pun for this character? Every single talk back about writer's rooms that I've seen has just has definitely included, oh, we did a we goofed off for a really long time, and then at <laughs> two in the morning we wrote the thing, and it was their best mm -hmm. work ever. So yeah, we're well on our way. Mm -hmm. Speaking you of gotta... <clears throat> writing some sketches and the uh, the case between Pat Verrecki and John Jacob Fingerl Fingerling, formerly John Jacob Fingerling, <laughs> no Fingerling potatoes, no. <laughs> This is a it's very just a potato golem. No, it's a wholesome <laughs> potato reference. Come on, <laughs> where's you. your mind? Oh, I'm tripping all over myself tonight. Um, this particular episode had a bunch of either you know continuations or the start of several longer form arcs that are going to span um, several episodes that we're going to continue to see. So you want to date a Scallon, we're going to continue to see the Chronicles of our lawsuit. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the the epic yeah, legal drama no one asked for. <laughs> <laughs> A law and order nerd in me asked for it. <laughs> I'd love our to hear for it. from I'd love to hear from you folks about what the what your experiences and what the differences are between writing some of these what we've seen a lot of in the past, which is sort of these one off sketches. Um, or competitions, as opposed to these multi-episode uh, long arcs. I think the previous one that we had was Primetime Mind Time, which is a three-part mm -hmm. mind fight that was filmed in the prospect. <laughs> these are things I say now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I'd love to hear y'all thoughts and experiences. Yeah, like the the doing primetime mime time long form was actually uh, not an accident, but it was kind of a, a happy accident where we got together and we were like, hey, you know, we could maybe make this a multi part thing. We can do that, like, so that we, because my initial thought was like, oh, we'll come back next month and we'll record another mime fight, remembering it was about to be winter and thinking, <laughs> you know, let's just do this now. Like let's a just do squirrel this hiding in us. <laughs> yes. So we ended up taking what I initially thought was going to be one match and crafting three different matches out of it. Um, so that one was very much done on the fly. Uh, whereas something like, <laughs> yeah, it really was. Uh, I had an idea to... and we did it. <laughs> My favorite was like, we, we built the first two and then we're like, okay, well, when we get to the second one, we'll build the third one. Forgot to build the third one. <laughs> <laughs> got to the spot where we were filming the third one and we were like, oh. Okay, well, here's the parameters. Here's what we can do. Also, yeah. Ashley had an idea and we did it. Hashtag shallow. <laughs> Just side That's note. Our, uh, our, our, our own Sam Eagle Eye is uh, jumping in. Oh, what? <laughs> Why will you not I'm show? Okay. to help because you were talking. Oh, uh. go for it. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Too many cooks, y'all. Too many cooks. Uh, yeah, so our own Sam Eagle Eye commenting. But yeah, for for the ones here, because we've got a couple that are long form that have already established, like we've got that mysterious person in the yellow jacket who's eventually going to show up, we assume. If we keep saying that this person is going to show up at some point. We've got footage of them. Um <laughs> It so we've got that similar every month, but you know, one day. <laughs> but uh, beyond that, like like you say, we just introduced uh, the 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 so you want to date a rapscallion, and the legal the legal drama has been going on. Uh, some of them, like the so you want to date a rapscallion, because we wanted to bring in somebody new. We brought in my friend Doug, uh, and because we wanted that different person who knows nothing about scowl other than watching it occasionally when I push it on them. Uh, he was like, yeah, like I definitely want to do it, but we wanted to make sure we had the script done. Uh, so that was out to him. We could do it all in one go. Boom. We've got an entire thing. So that's all filmed. I just need to edit it. Uh, the legal drama, 
that has sort of changed course. And a couple of these have changed course every now and again, because we're just like, no, this is a better idea. So it, it's for, at least on me, and I know I'm talking a lot on this one, but at least for me, I like that we have that variation where some of them are very much open because we could come up with a much better idea and realize, no, this is where the story actually needs to go. And it feels more like my, my inspiration, which was professional wrestling, where they have to do it different every week. And so you've got a story, but they might throw it away. Um, but then you've also got the sketch comedy of like, nope, it's got to be really well done. It's got to be perfect. It's got to be boom, you're, you're out. I think in general, what, even when, even if we are writing it over the course of a series of months, as opposed to like filming it all in one go, the way that um, you do with Prime Time, Mime Time, the way that we did with um, So You Want to Date a Rascali, and I think we usually have an outline, which is kind of nice. And so I think it, every, when, when we do these, we sort of get to live out the like, is it better to pre-write your ending or to just see where the show takes you um, <laughs> side of television? But I think it's useful because it's not, you know, the season seven of Lost, like, oh God, what do we do now? Like, how do we up this now? It's like, no, 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 we had a plan. We know it's gonna end eventually. If we get there in a slightly different way, it's fine. Um, or if we wrote it all in one go and we filmed it, that's also still fine. Like all the all of the content I think that uh, we put out, you know, we, we stand by and we're proud of. Um, but I think general, genuinely it allows us to work in the way that, that is best for the material and also best for the people that are in it. Um, that doesn't feel like foisting a sitcom on the people. And that's the beauty of, of episodic prestige drama such as this. That's right. You're in the next Sopranos, folks. You heard it here. <laughs> we don't talk about that other HBO show anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of any other HBO shows. I was going to make a joke and it's yeah. just like there there's other ones other than that one, but maybe you know, I, I assume. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just not that we can think of right now. Mm -hmm. It's fine, y'all. You um, mean that election special back in 88? That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that one. Good job yeah. HBO. Yeah. yeah. Just That's like killer. just I like what we're that. doing That's here. The one. That's mm -hmm. the one. I suddenly remembered the HBO kids shows from like now it's like going on like three decades ago, but like <laughs> happily ever after, or there's like crash box and stuff like that. Um, mm. Oh, good. I forgot <laughs> I could do that. I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> My very important point. No, but it's like um, <laughs> HBO feels like it's changed so much from when it was like, look at these weird stop motion things to mm. dragons and naked people. <laughs> Their whole brand now. <laughs> what else is on there? <laughs> Enough about HBO. They don't need our public, our free publicity, or they don't need our publicity, yeah. nor have they paid for it. So we're making enough money, and they're not paying us. <laughs> we have a very strict, we have a very strict uh, sponsorship deal, and that um, it doesn't exist yet. So yeah, if us. you want it, you got to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> Just like I said to all lawyer, my boyfriends ladder, in college. Ladder B, Ladder B and Associates if you want to get a sponsorship deal. Um, the last question I have. None of them paid for it. Just <laughs> FYI. You don't pay for it. I don't, I don't have anything to say to you. Um, <laughs> you had a question, Lauren? <laughs> yeah, I did have a question, but now I think I I have lots of questions. <laughs> This is this is my tactic. Whenever I am put on the spot by anything like this, I just I spray ink and I swim away. <laughs> Look, it works for octopuses. It can uh, work for anybody. You know what else works for everybody? Va Valentine's Day candy. But you know what we're not going to talk about? <laughs> All right. Octopus is so good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, their the brains are in their in their in their feet and wrapped around their uh, esophaguses. Is that I'm not true? sure about the first part of that, but the second part. <laughs> All right, I was about to say I have a marine biologist <sighs> on call that I will text right now to figure this out. <laughs> there are two weird things about octopus brains. One of them is the brain is wrapped around the esophagus. <laughs> 
the other thing you said is that it was in their feet. But I, I think, think that it goes into their arms a little bit or something. I don't Maybe know. That doesn't bit. sound right, like though. That sounds system. really implausible. But you can, I don't like, actually know. One of those species you can lose. Look, look, folks, none of us <laughs> have taken biology in a while. So back to Valentine's Day. I am, <laughs> by the way, I'm literally a biologist. <laughs> None of us, absolutely none of us know what we're talking but about. But also, you're biology. correct. I do not know anything about biology. I am not a very good biologist. <laughs> I would make a better cat lawyer, to be honest. This is why we should go back to talking about Valentine's Day candy. Um, Ink. What Valentine's Day candy would you, would you take in a fight? Would you take in a fight? How did you phrase this question? Um, are we fighting the, the Valentine's Day candy? Candy, or we bring it with? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think we're fighting the Valentine's. You're gonna put that on my it. resume. We're fighting it. You're yeah, fighting the candy. <sighs> yeah, I, I um, I feel like I would fight the uh, Valentine's Day heart-shaped Reeses because I could eat them all day, and I have, and so therefore I know that I can vanquish them easily. <laughs> Devour them. Mm-hmm. I would fight. I would fight those like little little lollipops that come like in the little paper valentines. Mm. They're just like it's purely corn syrup that has been solidified onto the end of the stick with some red food dye. Like it is not a good lollipop. It's not flavored like anything besides food dye and sugar. I would fight them. Uh, and I think I would fight leftover holiday candy, you know, like uh, Christmas and, and, and whatnot, <laughs> because it's old and I feel like I could take it. <laughs> I only fight people, like when I'm fighting people, I only fight people who are much older than me. Um, I do not like, I like a sure thing, you know? <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Robin likes a short thing. Rob, Robin Bennis, bad biologist, fights, fights elders. Fights old people. Um, I would take the chalk message hearts because those things are awful and they deserve to be pulverized. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I actually really love those chalky hearts. I that like, was going to be my answer if it was if it was the candy we were going to take to a fight. I think if that was the form of the the question. I think I've Are only you... had them once, or no, I think I got them in like a goodie bag or something, like the class Valentine when you're mm -hmm. eight, and mm -hmm. they don't want to tell you what it is, and they're like, "Here's mm -hmm. these chocolate hearts," and they were hearts, and they had messages on them, so I thought they were going to be great, so I saved them for last, and then I ate oh. them, and they were. It was like the equivalent of taking a sip of Sprite, only to realize that it's seltzer, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Like this is awful." Why? Oh, I, like, I like them. Too. I, will. I do. Yeah. I did also theory. eat chalk though um, in school. I but like chalk the chalk. Doesn't lie to you about what it is. Like chalk is chalk. Like chalk <laughs> looks like chalk. Valentine's Day hearts. I'm like, no, I'm not yeah. ready. Yeah, I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I did not appreciate it. So um, I would beat I... up. <laughs> And that I'm is sure. true, by the way. I once visited Dover and I was arrested for environmental terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and on that note, just those whole clips. <laughs> on that note, folks, I think we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Um, please feel free to uh, check us out on socials um, at Scowl Fight. Um, feel free to follow, subscribe, like, click all the buttons. Thank you for reminding me what our website is. Um, we will be back next month with March's episode of Digital Defenestration on Monday, March 29th at 7 p.m. Same place on all the streaming platforms. And until then, stay scowly and think about what Valentine's Day candy you would like to punch in the face <laughs> and which one lied to you. And just know that the answer is message hearts. <laughs> <laughs> Ink. Ink. Have a great evening, everybody. Ink.